Hey you, sorry you couldn't make it to the Philippines, but it's okay, we haven't been up to much. There's just no escape from the heat. All we do is take showers. We're always on the moon, yet we keep getting lost. We can't wait for the day to end, so we can just stay in at night. <laughs> I'm kidding! We're having a blast. We haven't stopped eating and partying all day. Plus, we've made a bunch of friends. The only thing that would make it better is if you were here too. Africa, a land of limitless talent. You have architects and engineers and project managers, so it's a whole ecosystem. We're a growing, ambitious middle class. African domestic demand will more than triple in the next six years. I think I've gotten a grasp of what the market wants. It's turning the continent into a 21st century powerhouse. We're in Made in Nigeria. It wasn't very popular. Now it's all about Made in Nigeria. Talking Business Africa on BBC World News. They say traitor, we say divisive, unpopular, controversial, defiant. They report what she did, we're on to why she did it. They get caught up in the story, we see the big picture. When they rush to conclusions, we rush to the scene. It's black and white, they say. It's never black and white. BBC News, find out what's actually happening. is BBC World News, I'm Simon Pusey, our top stories. NATO says it aims to avoid a new arms race after the collapse of a Cold War nuclear deal between the US and Russia. Russia has violated the treaty now for a long time, and therefore we now see the final demise of the treaty. More demonstrations in Hong Kong, this time it's the territory's civil servants and health workers. Also in the programme, a new taste of freedom for women in Saudi Arabia. The kingdom lifts long-standing restrictions on traveling abroad. And soaring global temperatures, scientists warn the month of July may have been the hottest on record. Hello and welcome to BBC World News. President Trump threatened to do it back in February. Now, six months later, the United States has confirmed it's pulled out of a landmark nuclear arms treaty signed with Russia back in 1987. The US says Russia has violated the treaty by developing a new type of banned cruise missile, and NATO agrees. Our diplomatic correspondent James Landell has more. It was a crucial moment towards the ending of the Cold War. The moment in 1987 when the leaders of the United States and Soviet Union signed the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev promised to destroy all their missiles with ranges between 300 miles and 3,400 miles, eliminating at a stroke an entire class of nuclear weapons. The mobile, ground-launch nuclear weapons were hard to detect and could strike anywhere in Europe within minutes. But in recent years, Russia has begun testing and deploying a new cruise missile, which the US says breaches the INF Treaty. So they've withdrawn from the agreement, much to the concern of the international community. The world will lose an invaluable break on nuclear war, and this will likely either not reduce the threat posed by ballistic missiles. Regardless of what transpires, the parties should avoid destabilizing developments and urgently seek agreement on a new common path for international arms control. The US had given Russia six months to comply with the treaty, but Moscow denied its new missile breaking rules and blamed the US for ending the agreement. The risk now is that the demise of the treaty sparks a new arms race between Russia, China and the US. 
NATO leaders promised to ensure that the alliance's defenses remained credible, but said they would not mirror Russia and deploy new land-based missiles. We don't want a new arms race. That's the reason why we will respond in a measured and defensive way. And that's also the reason why we continue to work for arms control, non-proliferation and uh, disarmament. Three decades ago, the leaders of the world's superpowers acted to reduce the nuclear threat in Europe. Their treaty is now dead. Yet another part of the international rules-based order has been consigned to history. James Landell, BBC News. Well, our Washington correspondent Gary O'Donoghue says the US actions came as no surprise. No, none at all. They uh, gave pretty uh, clear warning that they were going to do that back in February. The six-month uh, timetable ticked away. Uh, there was no particular contact, we understand, with uh, Moscow overnight to formally uh, um, inform them of the fact this was something that was set out in February and they said it would happen unless Russia changed what it was doing. There was no change and therefore no communication necessary. Uh, severe condemnation, as you'd expect here from the State Department and others, saying Russia had, had simply lied about this missile. They, I was on a call yesterday with senior administration officials and they said there'd been more than 30 attempts by the US to talk to Russia about uh, the development of this new missile since 2013. They said there'd been one particular meeting that had really caused a major problem back in December of 2014 where the de Russians simply denied the existence of this new missile whatsoever. So the treaty is dead. And now what Washington wants to do is urge a, a much broader discussion, not just about intermediate uh, weaponry, intermediate range weaponry, but all nuclear weaponry. And they want it to be a, a trilateral exercise involving the US, Russia, and of course, China now. Yeah, well, you, men you mentioned that, Gary. There have been talks between the US and Russia regarding a potential new deal with China. Um, what do you think the chances of, of this, any kind of agreement coming, coming to fruit are? Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of other tensions at the moment, of course, between the, the US and China that will make uh, those sorts of discussions much harder, particularly on trade at the moment. Uh, but it was, I mean, if you look at the pattern of the way uh, emerging nuclear powers have come about, and China's had the bomb for a long time, but of course, it hasn't had the infrastructure or the, the variety of weapons. It wants to, clearly wants to develop some of those. Uh, countries tend not want not to want to get into um, non-proliferation type agreements or, or limitation agreements until they've got what they think they need. Uh, we saw that with the test pan treaty in the, in the last century. People signed up to it once they'd done their testing. That was Gary O'Donoghue speaking a little earlier. Now thousands of civil servants in Hong Kong have taken part in a rally in support of pro-democracy demonstrations defying an official order. The government had told them they were expected to remain totally loyal to the territory's leader, Carrie Lam. But large numbers ignored the war. Stephen McDonald has been following the story for us. Hong Kong civil servants were warned not to turn out for this rally. The idea is they should be loyal to the government. But in their thousands, they have ignored that and come to this garden where the rally is just wrapped up and people are heading home. We're now heading into the third month of this crisis in Hong Kong. It's no sign of ending. This is the first of what will be four days of protests. Tomorrow, there's another pro-democracy rally and another rally in support of Beijing, I suppose you could say, in support of the police, rival rally. Then on Sunday, another rally. Then on Monday, talk of the general strike. So all over this city, you can't get away from this political crisis. And as I say, there's, there's no opening for an end as yet. There's no way it seems to wind it up. But what is quite interesting is despite the violent street clashes we've seen, despite people defeating the walls, despite people being arrested, there is broad support for this pro-democracy movement amongst the shopkeepers, taxi drivers, small business owners. And while ever that support holds up, I think we can see this just rolling on and on. The authorities in Indonesia have recorded a powerful earthquake off the coast of the islands of Java and Sumatra. US monitors said the quake had a magnitude of 6.9, while Indonesia's disaster agency 
put it at 7.4. Tremors were felt in many cities, including the capital Jakarta, but there are no reports of damage or casualties. Indonesia has now lifted initial warnings that the earthquake could spark a tsunami. Let's take a look at some of the day's other news now, and the singer R. Kelly has pleaded not guilty to charges of racketeering and sex trafficking in New York. Kelly was charged last month on five counts that included kidnapping, sexual exploitation of child and forced labor in relation to several women and minors. German customs officials have discovered four and a half tons of cocaine in a shipping container at the port of Hamburg, the country's biggest ever haul of the illegal drug, which has an estimated street value of a billion dollars. The governing Conservative Party here in the UK has lost a key by-election. It reduces Prime Minister Boris Johnson's working majority to just one, making it even harder for him to push through a no-deal Brexit. Now, 25,000 extra troops have been deployed in Indian administered Kashmir less than a week after 10,000 additional soldiers were sent there. Officials say they're acting on intelligence about an increase in violence in the region. Kashmir is disputed by India and Pakistan, and for more than 30 years now, Indian Kashmir has seen armed insurgency. At any given time, more than 100,000 soldiers are deployed there, making it one of the most militarized regions in the world. Our India correspondent, Yudhita Limai, reports from Mumbai. The increased security deployment in Kashmir caused a fair bit of panic in the region. There's wild speculation about what might be behind it. The other big development today is that an annual pilgrimage that takes place in Indian Kashmir, uh, it was meant to go on until mid-August. Thousands of Hindus participate in it. That has been called off. All of the pilgrims have been asked to return. Uh, and the reason for that, sources in the Indian government say, is that there's increased intelligence input of terror threats that could be specifically targeted at the pilgrimage. We also heard from the top police officer in Kashmir today, and his explanation for the increase uh, in the number of troops in the region was that they were anticipating that violence in the area could increase. Uh, he also said that because security forces had engaged in a number of activities in the region uh, in the last few months, they hadn't been able to give troops time to relax. But the last time we saw heightened security in Kashmir was earlier this year when tensions between India and Pakistan were high. 40 Indian troops had lost their lives in Indian Kashmir in an attack. Uh, India had said that it had launched a strike targeted at a militant group in Pakistani territory. And that's the reason why there is a lot of fear among people in that area and speculation around the country about what all of this could be leading up to. The head of the Brazilian agency that monitors deforestation has resigned amid tensions with the country's president. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, accused the government's space research agency of smearing Brazil's reputation abroad by publishing data showing a dramatic increase in deforestation. Mr. Bolsonaro says the data is inaccurate. The head of the agency, Ricardo Galval, rejects the accusations and has labeled the president a coward. Well, let's bring you some pictures now from here in the UK and a race against time to save a dam that is uh, at risk of flooding. It's 1,500 people who have been evacuated from a town called Wavy Bridge in Derbyshire. We're seeing pictures here of water that's being pumped out of this reservoir. And a lot of water is being pumped out of it. 4.2 million liters is being pumped out every hour. The problem is the dam holds 1.3 million. Hello? Turn your microphone on, please. And say a couple of words. So this is the conversational English class. If you want to speak, you have to talk. Say hello to me, please. When you are willing to talk, please tell me. In tons of water. Um, 4.2 million litres per hour, but that's only drops water levels by about half a metre um, and authorities, fire services especially, working around the clock to try and save this dam um, and the surrounding houses where 1,500 people have been evacuated. You see a Chinook helicopter there, um, which is in the middle of dropping uh, sand and shingles to try and bulk up the, the, the reservoir. Um, that's the RAF Chinook there. And it's in the process of dropping 400 tons 
Hello. It's a conversational English class, so please uh, say hello to me. Please, hello. This is a conversational English class. Say hello. Okay, when you are willing to talk, then we will start talking. To try and show up. A domestic abuse shelter or marry. Saudi activist and artist Ms. Safa told the BBC she felt the reforms didn't go far enough. It needs to be human rights for everyone and not just women. When women um, when when women receive or become sort of equal to men, Saudi Arabia is still gonna remain an authoritarian. Hello. This is a conversational English class. Uh, what we do here is we just talk. So please say hello to me. Dictatorship that violates countless human rights. So we have Iran about Rights groups have decried the kingdom's crackdown and arrest over the last year on some of the country's leading women's rights activists. A few have been released, but many are still in jail. This week, Eugene Al Haflu spent her 30th birthday in prison. She is reported to being tortured and sexually abused. In 2018, Saudi Arabia ranked in the world's 10 worst countries in the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Gap Study, and is still one of the most difficult places in the world to live as a woman. Mega Mohan, BBC World News. Stay with us on BBC World News, still to come. The conditions here are just perfect for an explosion of disease. We have an exclusive report from Democratic Republic of Congo where conflicts and people displacement make Ebola difficult to contain. Space Agency NASA has ordered an investigation after confirmation today that astronauts were cleared to fly while drunk. The last foot patrol in Saipar Ma, once an everyday part of the soldier's plot, drudgery and danger, now no more after almost four decades. It's like it's on one's own in a private house, not doing any harm to anyone. You see why all these people just wander in and say you're doing something wrong. Hello, um, it's a conversational English class, so please uh, uh, say hello to me. Uh, we talk here, uh, so please uh, turn your microphone on and say hello. How are you doing? We just talk here. Six rare white lion cubs on the prow of Worcestershire Park and already have been met with a roar of... Disgust. This man is destroying his Japanese-made car. An act of defiance as Tokyo slaps trade restrictions on Seoul. He's not alone in his fury. The trade spat has prompted thousands of South Koreans to boycott Japanese goods. Hundreds of items have been taken off supermarket shelves. And as the row ramps up, the country's two foreign ministers faced off at the ASEAN Forum in Thailand. Neither are backing down. I am compelled to draw your attention to the decision made by Japan just this morning to remove my country from its list of trading partners that receive 
comprehensive export preferential treatment. And this in a very unilateral and arbitrary manner. We are gravely concerned by this decision, to say the least. This coming in particular in the footsteps of an earlier decision that restricts some key export items to Korea. Maintaining effective effort, export control over sensitive goods and technologies from a security perspective is Japan's responsibility as a member of the international community. Japan's necessary and legitimate review of its export control is fully compatible with the free trade regime. This dispute comes after decades of mistrust. When Japan occupied South Korea from 1910 to 1945, prisons such as this one were used to silence and crush dissent. Around 500 women women and children. Some of them were tortured. It's a time that Koreans have never forgotten, and more importantly, have never forgiven. First of all, we go. Tens of thousands of Koreans were forced to work in Japanese mines and steel mills without pay during the Second World War. They say they were treated as slaves. Japan maintains these issues were resolved by a treaty signed in 1965. Um, yeah, but a Supreme Court ruling in Seoul decided last year that workers and their families were owed compensation. Seoul believes Tokyo's trade restrictions on essential supplies for its biggest industries are a form of targeted retaliation for the court orders. Japan says that's simply not true. But the pain won't just be felt here, it could ripple through global tech supply chains, which may force the US to step in to try to solve this feud before it escalates further. Laura Vicker, BBC News, Seoul. The Ebola outbreak in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo is said to be the most complex ever. Now there's a growing displacement crisis as a result of violence between communities. More than 300,000 people have fed their homes, with many sheltering in makeshift camps. The BBC's senior Africa correspondent Anne Soy travelled to the city of Bunia, where she found conditions perfect for an explosion of Ebola. Thousands on the move in the DRC's northeastern province of Ituri, taking what they can as they flee. They've lost homes, food, and their loved ones. 49 bodies were recovered in this village alone when a rival ethnic community attacked in June. This was once a big village, the village of Logo, and see what remains. That's this burnt out hut. The people have all fled. They've been coming back during the day to harvest their crop. And they tell me that they're determined to return here, even though there's every evidence of the massacre they went through with a big graveyard just as you enter the village. This is where most end up in camps that have sprung up across the province. They are farmers who are about to harvest their crops, but now, they are forced to rely on donations. I lost my husband and two children. We ran and hid in the fort. Hello. Uh, this is a conversational English class, and um, I'm very happy to see you here. So please uh, turn your microphone on and say hello to me. So the only thing that we do here is that we talk. So please uh, say hello to me. This is a conversational English class. We just talk here. Yeah, so please turn your microphone on and say hello to me. until soldiers came to rescue us. The UN has its biggest peacekeeping force here, trying to pacify a region that has known no peace for decades. The conflict in Turi just got worse, with automatic weapons now replacing machetes. I see a security. First of all, we want security. The government should confiscate the guns the attackers have. 
those who want to join the army should do so. They should leave us to go back to our land, to build our homes and farms. Hello again. Um, it's so good to see you here. So please uh, uh, say hello. This is a conversational English class. So what we do here is uh, we just talk. So that is why just say hello to me, please. Hello, Alex. More than 300,000 people have been displaced. This grandmother shares this small tent with her team. Wait in China too. And now it's official. July is one of the hottest, if not the hottest, on record. And July isn't alone. 2019 has been very warm globally. Each month so far is among the four warmest for the month in question. June has been the highest ever. This particular month has been very warm, but to me, this is not really the main point. The main point is that not only this month has been very warm, but last month was very warm. All months during 2019 were very warm in terms of comparing with other years, and that trend is not likely to, to stop unless we do something about curbing a greenhouse gas emission. The results are based on billions of measurements from satellites, ships, aircraft and weather stations all across the world. These latest figures are part of a long-term trend in rising global temperatures. The computer models of the impact of climate change predict that more summer temperature records are likely to be broken all across the world more often. This record shows that the average temperature around the world in July was about 1.2 degrees above its pre-industrial rate. Now that's getting very close to the 1.5 degree threshold that countries signed up to in the Paris Agreement and will put pressure on government so they really now have to act urgently and set a plan to cut their emissions down to zero by the middle of this century. Individual heat waves can't be pinned to human-created global warming. But the increase in extremes of weather that we're beginning to see is in line with the predictions made by climate change experts. And they say that they're likely to get worse and more frequent. Pala Ghosh, BBC News. Well, that's just about it from me. Don't forget you can get in touch with me and some of the team on Twitter. I'm at Tuesday, And you can find out more information uh, on all of those stories on our website at bbc.com forward slash news. But for now, thank you very much indeed for watching. Do stay tuned right here on BBC World News. For much more information, uh, do stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Hello there. The hot weather across the European continent has become confined to the Mediterranean now, and that's how it's looking through the weekend into next week. Further north, we've lost the heat wave, a bit more unsettled. Hello, Katerina. Uh, please turn your microphone on and say hello. This is a conversational English class. We just talk here. So please turn your microphone on and uh, say hello. I'm not teaching any lectures, I'm not reading anything, I'm just talking. So please, uh, turn your microphone on and let's start talking. Say hello. Well, uh, this is a conversational English class. And uh, we just talk here. So, Ekaterina, hello. Please uh, say hello to me. Please do. I can hear that you turned your microphone on. Please say hello. Hello, Katerina. Hello, Alex. 
How are you doing? Where did you learn your English? Do you use English often? Have you been to some foreign countries? Okay, please say hello. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> hello. Hello. I'm sorry. I try to. Uh... <laughs> I don't understand uh, what I must to do. <laughs> what I must do? Uh, just talking. I'm <laughs> just asking you how. Uh, are where, you? I where are you from? Me? Yes. I'm from Russia. From Russia? <laughs> yes. Uh, from what city? Well, right now I'm in the uh, North Caucasus Mountains in the city of Vladikavkaz. Oh. <laughs> It's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry for my English and uh, <laughs> okay. I um, I uh, um, uh, <laughs> <Господи>. <clears throat> I uh, am. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh -huh. в такой программе общаться. <laughs> Очень интересно. Случайно попала сюда. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm uh, 17. Um, uh, this year I um, have um, finished uh, school. Um, have, uh, I have passed uh, uh, my exams um, uh, and uh, I uh, pass. I, I, I've passed uh, uh, EGM um, in English. Very good. <laughs> yes, uh, because I want to <clears throat> study this language uh, in the future. Uh, but um, um, now I um, I try to um, uh, stupid. <laughs> To enter, to enter, to enter to the university. Um, what? Uh, so, but um, I can't um, uh, do it. Um, um, I can't uh, to, uh, uh, enter. Uh, can't study um, uh, this language this year because I uh, have no uh, enough. The uh, um, ball. <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk about that. So, I have a question to you. Um, uh, which city are you from? I'm uh, from Pushkino. Um, uh, I live uh, uh, near um, Moscow, near, near Moscow. Yes, it's uh, Moscow. Now, Moscow. <laughs> Moscow region. Okay. And uh, uh, what is your score in uh, the Russian national exam? How many points? Uh, mm -hmm. What? How many points did you get in your uh, Russian national exam? What is your score? Like you said, that this is not enough for you to enter yeah. the university. Uh, Sixty in English, uh, sixty-nine. Uh, sixty-nine. That's yeah. that's not bad. So yes, but uh, it's not enough. Uh, just tell me. Um, if you think I, about, yeah. Well, I, I think that I, uh, um, yeah, no problem. Um, this uh, I have this res result <laughs> result <laughs> because I um, um, try to prepare for exams uh, myself. Okay. Uh, without uh, without teacher. Okay, I understand. But um, mm -hmm. where did you learn your English? At school. Mm -hmm. um, only, only at school? At school. 
Uh, did you go to some foreign countries? Yes, only in school. Uh, did you go to some foreign countries abroad? Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, did you have? Uh, yeah. Did you have some conversation? What? Did you have some conversations with the foreign people, with people from other countries on the internet? Did you talk to people from America or Great Britain on the internet? I did you did you did you some some someone but uh, mm -hmm. okay yes. did you, did you speak to some people on the internet in English? Did you speak to some people on the internet? I'm sorry, but I, uh, I. I don't. You cannot hear me. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Now, yes. OK, very good. So. Do you have uh, some friends in other countries? No. <laughs> okay. But I want uh, to have <laughs> them. So, I want to um, go uh, maybe uh, uh, this year uh, in some um, in some country and uh, uh, to to uh, speak with um, um, people from other countries okay very good so you said that um you want to enter the university yes. so and you said that you will not study you will not learn english language the english language in the university right what will you learn yes. what will you learn in the university what will you study Um, I don't know uh, yet it, mm -hmm. uh, because um, now I try to <laughs> uh, to understand uh, what I um, will learn. Okay. Very good. All right. So, what do you want to be? In, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I want to know uh, what uh, uh, what what do you want to be in future? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be a, a writer? Or do you want to be a translator? Uh, no, no uh, I, I uh, don't want to be a doctor. I, um, um, earlier, I think uh, I, I thought uh, that I will be um, uh, an actress, but, but uh, now I don't uh, want uh, to be uh, to work uh, at the theater, and uh, I want to learn language. Uh, I want to learn um, different languages, um, and um, I think m maybe I will uh, be um, a translator or um, a teacher okay that sounds very good for me so uh do you think that uh, we can do some exercise together is it possible so um i will show you my screen okay. um,
people we've got. Yes, yes. It's those trade tensions that are also putting pressure on the global economy. So the Fed is really taking a preemptive move, despite the fact that we're seeing yet again another really positive jobs report. Samira, thank you for bringing us up to date there on Wall Street. In other news, the US energy giant Chevron has reported a 26% jump in profit. It made $4.3 billion in the three months to the end of June as it continued to benefit from America's status as the world's biggest oil producer. However, the company's chief executive noted they might have done better if it wasn't for falling oil and gas prices. That also hurt ExxonMobil, where maintenance costs means profits for the same period fell by a fifth. South Korea's parliament has approved nearly $5 billion of extra spending to support the economy amid the trade dispute with Japan. Tokyo says it's removing Seoul from its list of trusted trade partners, which will mean fresh restrictions. The deepening route over a historical dispute has placed restrictions on some of the material South Korea's tech industry depends on that could threaten global supply chains. Apple and Google are temporarily stopping workers listening to voice recordings captured by smart speakers and virtual assistants like Siri. It follows a report in the UK's Guardian newspaper that third-party contractors used by Apple had heard people having sex and discussing private medical information. Apple says the aim was to help improve user experiences while protecting their privacy. Well, before we go, quick look at the markets. No surprise, as we mentioned, uh, tariffs and trade concerns weighing on them. Uh, at the moment, U.S. markets look set for their worst weekly losses of this year. That's all we've got time for. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. So you're back. Hello. You're back. Hello. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, my internet is very bad today. What's that? What is that? Say it again. What did you say? Uh, what? What did you say? Uh, my internet is very bad today. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. So. I'm I said that my internet, uh, yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. We can uh, do a little bit of um, an exercise right now. So, uh, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes, I see. Yeah, very good. So. I will try and find an exercise for us to do. Now, um, let's have a look at this exercise. So, for questions one to eight, read the text below and think of the word which best fits each gap. Use only one word in each gap, and there is an example at the beginning. So, if you don't mind, please uh, start reading. Uh, now? Yes. Yes, okay, okay. Uh, what's, uh, what is a shopaholic? Uh, yeah. Uh, in uh, recent years, uh, shopaholics have come to the public attention on television and uh, in newspaper articles. Mm -hmm. While the media sometimes use the word casually, shopaholics suffer um, suffer on uh, area and sometimes uh, fighting lack. I'm sorry. Uh, what mu what I um, what must I do? Uh, the, you, you, uh, have the task. you have the task here. It, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. See. 
uh, we have only 40 minutes for the class and uh, it's, it's about to finish right now. Um, it says, uh, find uh, one word which best fits each gap. It says in the task here, use only one word. But, uh, you know, you can use any word uh, which one you word. like. And uh, we'll talk with so go ahead. Yeah, keep on doing. You are doing a good job. Oh. Yeah, keep on reading. It's oh, uh, it's not easy for me. Well, I, I don't think that I, I think that's easy. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you fine. I'm reading. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. I must uh, use um, 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 think anything word. Yes, absolutely. Uh, any any word. Yes. Any word. Um. Так, and sometimes uh, fighting in black. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes uh, fighting lack on self-control. Okay, well, actually it should be uh, uh, should like self Without doubt, we live in a spent happy society. People live beyond their means and uh, there are no debt. Well, well, actually... Many people, whatever... They, yes? Um, Many people live beyond their means and are in debt. In debt. Okay. Go ahead. Keep on reading, please. You're doing a good job. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Keep on reading. Yes, I'm here again. Please do. Keep on reading. Will you please read? Uh, okay, I will try. Um, I'm sorry, uh, what uh, have you uh, said uh, about... Um, uh, about uh, my... Uh, about uh, last um, last word? Uh, people live beyond their means and are in debt. In debt. They are in debt. Yes. In. Oh, okay. In debt. Okay, we I not, understand. We do not pronounce the, we say in debt. Mm -hmm. uh, many people, uh, whatever their uh, level of income, think of shopping as a hobby. Uh, Right. Mm -hmm. uh, think of shopping as a hobby. Uh, they take uh, weekend long shopping excursions, uh, spend money uh, they uh, don't have, and often regret their uh, purchase, purchase. purchases purchase. later. 
purchases? Uh, purchases. Purchases later. But um, on this mean, that's a question. Uh, that uh, um, they have a problem. It's a question. Uh, okay, but um, um, uh, but uh, do this mean mm -hmm. that they have a problem? Yes, almost there, almost correct. Not necessary. Uh, not not uh, necessarily. Yes. Um, true shop shopaholics shop. Um, um, true shopaholics shop. Uh, think. No. Um, What they can't help it. Okay. Shop. What they can't help it. No. Because they. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I think that I, I. I think that I uh, do a lot of mistakes. <laughs> but that's all right. Okay. Go Thank ahead. you so much <laughs> for help. Um, are they do on buying things uh, long. Um, uh, they go they go on buying things um long uh, ago long we have future debts they go on buying things long ago maybe no mm -hmm. All right. Long. Yes. Um, they have huge debts. Um, they shop when they feel depressed and use spending as a way of coping their life. Uh, they don't shop because they enjoy it uh, or because they need the things they buy. Uh, they buy things because they feel they have to. Uh, Shopaholics are um, a fond of control. Uh, hmm. I don't remember this uh, construction. Shopaholics. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's not a problem. Absolutely. So uh, let's go back and let's uh, talk a little bit about the set. So, are you a shopaholic? What do you think? Are you a no? I think that, uh, I, I think that I'm I'm not a shopaholic because I um, I um, sh sh I. Um, I'm sorry that I shop uh, sometimes and um, I it's uh, it's uh, it uh, um, it's not very uh, important for me okay but uh, do you know people uh, maybe your friends or I don't know relatives who are shopaholics yes I have uh, I know um, uh, a girl <laughs> and uh, she is a shopaholic i think yeah, he, she she's uh, uh, my um uh class um, classmate 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 yeah yeah okay. Cla classmate why does she shop so much <laughs> because uh, I, I think, uh, and um, I think that she uh, uh, shops uh, so much because uh, 
uh, her um, her family have uh, a lot, lot of money. Her family has has a lot of money. <laughs> or here, what? I understand. Mm -hmm. So, but um, you know that um, uh, this article is about uh, shopaholics, and uh, what did you learn about shopaholics from this article? Uh, I learned. I learned. Um, I understand that shopaholics. Um, uh, it it is uh, uh, shop shop <laughs> uh, is um, as um, I'm sorry. How to say balism? You have many words like illness. This is British word or sickness. Illness is American word. Okay. Disease. Okay. Eh? Thank you so much. I think that um, uh, shopaholism is uh, um, um, illness. Do you do you know this word to be ill? Do Do you know to this? To be ill. Yes, yes to be ill. And yes. Illness. I think that you know the word illness, right? Yes, yes, I know, but I sometimes I f forget about <laughs> forget yeah. this word. I I forget it almost all the time. Everything. Okay, very good. <laughs> and um, here you have um, a word uh, which is uh, dead. Do you understand the meaning of this word dead? What is no. that? what? Uh, dead. Uh, it maybe it is a card. Um, no, it's. Uh, no, no. It's uh, when uh, you have uh, to give uh, money back to somebody. Uh, so how do um, you say it in Russian? How uh, I understand when you give money, yeah, uh, give money to some people. Uh, that's quite the opposite. When you take money from somebody. And you have to give it back. Ah, I understand. Yes. So cr what is that? Cr what is the word in Russian? Credit. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. So what what you're saying in English is called no. a loan. What you're saying, credit in English is a loan, and uh, you can take a loan from the bank. Um, but this is uh, when uh, you take money from somebody, you have to give uh, this money back to pay this money back. Dol? Yes, right. Absolutely. Yes. So that is dol. Mm -hmm. So, um, You know that uh, this is the problem for some people because they keep on buying on and on and on. And sometimes they shop, as the article says, when they feel depressed. They shop when they feel depressed. Do you agree that some people can shop? Yeah, but I think that it's, um, it's very sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. But uh, do you know some people that can shop when they feel I think depressed? That... What? Do you know some people who, who uh, can? No, they. I think uh, people that uh, um, can shop when uh, they uh, feel depressed, uh, but uh, they uh, don't. Uh, um, do it um, always. All right. So I will just uh, try and uh, give you the correct answers and then we will finish the class. All right. Okay. Yes. 
So in recent years, shopaholics have come to the public attention on television and in newspaper articles. While the media sometimes use the word casually, shopaholics suffer from a real and sometimes frightening lack of self-control. Without doubt, we live in a spent happy society. People live beyond their means and are in debt. Many people, whatever their level of income, think of shopping as a hobby. They take weekend long shopping excursions, spend money they do not have, and often regret their purchases later. But does this mean that they have a problem? Not necessarily. True shopaholics shop because they cannot help it. They go and buy thing, things long um, until they have huge debts. They shop when they feel depressed and use spending as a way of coping with life. They do not shop because they enjoy it or because they need the things they buy. They buy things because they feel they have to. Shopaholics are out of control. Okay, any questions? Do you understand oh, I understand everything? The text. More yes, <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right. But uh, when I uh, uh, when I uh, read it uh, uh, at, at first, I uh, don't understand all this text because and I <laughs> I understand that I um, I had a lot of mistakes. I oh. did a lot of mistakes. Okay, very good. But uh, see, uh, the now time I is up. Because, uh, thank you. Yeah, the, the time is up. And uh, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. And uh, every, every week I have these classes, but uh, next week I will not have this class because I will be business traveling. But in a week, I think it will be, um, well, I'm not sure, August 17th. Um, maybe I will have a class. So I, uh, I welcome you. I invite you, please uh, feel very welcome to come and join this class every time when you see the announcement. Okay, thank you so much again for joining me in this class. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I, I, will, I will try. I want to, uh, to be here. <laughs> okay. uh, Yes. And uh, if you want to, uh, you can leave. Uh, uh, you can leave. Um, let me see. The review. Okay. Just hold on. So this is uh, this is my page in uh, contact. Uh, it is called. Um, Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Or emphasize emphasize English, and uh, I have uh, here uh, the reviews of my classes. If you want to, you can leave it here. Okay. So again, um, it's called Okubljone Angliski, or emphasized English, and um, here you have. Uh, you can read it and you can leave your review if you want to. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, I will see you sometime later. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.